Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It is post-match reaction showtime after Liverpool have just sadly lost 2-1 to Manchester City at the Etihad in what was, to be honest, a really, really good game to watch. And it's part of the reason that I'm not really, really downbeat about it. And the other reason is, of course, the fact that we're still four points clear at the top of the league. So I think if you're absolutely tearing your hair out at this point, then there's no way you're going to survive the rest of the title race because a four-point lead at this stage over that Man City team, which we all know is brilliant because we just played against them. We just watched them play for 90 minutes and they were pretty good. I think it's fair to say a four-point lead over them at this stage is fantastic. You can't really ask much more than that and yet we could have had a lot more than that we could have had a 10 point lead on them by the end of tonight but unfortunately we don't and that's just because the fine margins didn't go our way tonight and this is why I'm not hugely downbeat about it and why it's kind of annoyed me to see the reaction from on Twitter from some people you know some people slating the performance saying we weren't good enough saying we didn't want it as much as City and that singling out players that I don't think deserve to be given any sort of abuse for their performances today because at the end of the day like I said it was the really really fine margins that just didn't go our way you know that that near goal that we scored halfway through the first half, which was, I think, about 1.12 centimetres away from being over the line and is then cleared away from John Stones. And it goes through Mohamed Salah's legs where, you know, on any other day when the luck is going our, our way or at least isn't going horribly against us, that bounces off Salah and in or John Stones doesn't quite reach it and it goes over the line and Liverpool go 1-0 up. Unfortunately, because today just didn't feel like our day, that didn't quite happen. And then you've got the City goal that they score sort of I'm not going to say against the run of play but it didn't really feel like either team warranted a goal out of that first half because it was just so so manic and no team ever really seems to have a huge foothold in the game neither team really created any clear-cut chances and it wasn't a clear-cut chance itself that actually led to Man City's goal and that's why I don't think people should be criticizing Dejan Lovren he's coming for so much stick after the game I've seen people saying he should never play for Liverpool again and I've been a victim of saying that in the past. I said it after his horror show against Spurs. To be fair, the one he had against Spurs at Wembley last season, that was terrible. Tonight was nowhere near that bad. So I think people saying he should never play for Liverpool again after tonight's performance is just ridiculous. Because if you ask me, he didn't put too many feet wrong. You know, that goal in particular, people can say maybe he, shouldn't, he should close Aguero down a bit more, maybe narrow the angle somehow. But if he does that, Aguero can cut inside. At the end of the day, you can criticise Alisson just as much for his starting position and say he should be covering his near post better but really what you've got to do is accept that that is a fantastic world-class finish from Aguero from that angle on his weaker foot with the ball in the air under pressure from Dejan Lovren to get that kind of power and that kind of placement that's just the mark of a world-class striker and of course also a striker who seems to have a horrendous habit of always scoring against Liverpool at the Etihad when it is a Premier League game so I don't want to see people criticizing Dejan Lovren for that he's barely put a foot wrong and at the end of the day, world-class players will punish you at times. And that's what happened today. You know, City's world-class players just had a slightly better game than our world-class players. Sometimes that's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to lose because of it. But because of the cushion that Liverpool have built up already, because of how we've been, good we've been so far already this season, it's not necessarily a huge problem. And yeah, I don't think we performed as well as City. Yeah, I do think they actually did nullify our threat, especially in the second half, very well. Like I said, in the first half, it was very frantic. It never felt like either team was getting a foothold in the game. But once it got into that second half, City did start to do what they did at Anfield earlier on in the season, where... They put men behind the ball. They tried to prioritise stopping Liverpool scoring ahead of going up the other end and scoring goals for themselves. And largely, by and large, it worked really, really well. And I think Liverpool deserve all the credit in the world for the fact they actually got through that Manchester City defence. It's such a well-worked goal. And it's such a shame that that goal will unfortunately not really count for anything apart from a slight dent in Man City's goal difference and a slight boost to ours because it's such a great move. You know, Alexander-Arnold, who some people again were saying had a poor game, but to be honest, I thought was fine apart from again, just a couple of mistakes that are part and parcel of playing a game at this kind of tempo against a team as good as Manchester City. There are people essentially criticising our players for not having perfect games, for not delivering a 10 out of 10 performance and any other day that wouldn't be a problem. Problem. Today it was. But yeah, the goal that we scored was fantastic. The little jink from Alexander Arnold to come inside then 
on his weaker foot, the vision, the technique to play that ball to Robertson. And then Robertson, you know, another fullback. This is two young fullbacks creating this goal who then plays in a perfect cross for Firmino. Firmino back amongst the goals again, which is fantastic to see. And I think that's what I'm taking away from tonight is that there are still positives to see. And yeah, there are negatives as well. Like I said, at times, players made mistakes at crucial moments. Maybe you could argue Alexander-Arnold should get across quicker to cover that space that Leroy Sané exploits. But again, it's such a good finish from Sané. He could not place that better if he tried that a million times after tonight. That was the perfect finish from him. So... Don't get hung up on it, is essentially is what I'm saying. Because, yeah, it wasn't a perfect performance in Liverpool. Yeah, with hindsight being 2020, you should you could say that maybe we should bring Shakiri on earlier. We should maybe play Fabinho from the start. But I think he got the team selection right at the start. I thought that he should have played that midfield three. And, yeah, maybe it looks a bit out of his depth. Maybe Milner wasn't quite ready for the pace of the game. But you couldn't have called that the game would be played at that speed. Because, like I said, the last game we played against City was very slow, very tepid. It was all about both sides shutting each other down. Jurgen Klopp, for all we know, was preparing for a very similar scenario because, again, hindsight is fantastic. We know now how Man City set up to try and beat us in this game, but we didn't know they were going to do that beforehand. So, again, the whole message of the video is please, please do not lose your minds because Liverpool weren't that bad tonight. If Liverpool had been bad, if Dejan Lovren has been, had been as bad as people said he was tonight, we would have lost by about five goals or something like that because people are making out that he had some sort of aberration, that he was giving the ball away at every turn. But by and large, he was making the right decisions. There are a couple of times that he gets caught out, but that happens when you're against players that are this good. The great thing about this Liverpool team is players always make mistakes. That happens. But whenever they do, other players come in to help them out. You know, Alisson steps in to make up for Dejan Lovren's error. So does Virgil van Dijk. So does Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson and members of the midfield as well. It's just tonight, it wasn't our day. And the picture that will sum up the night is that little one on the goal line decision system thingy where it shows just how close that ball was to getting over the line. If that ball goes over the line, it's a totally different story. Maybe Liverpool win. Maybe we're nine points clear at the top of the league and 10 points clear of Manchester City. Unfortunately, we are. We are only four points clear at the top of the league. And if you're losing your mind at that, as I said at the top of the video, you are not ready for this title race because there is a long way to go yet. There would have been a long way to go yet if Liverpool had won this game, drawn this game. It's a long way to go even though we lost. And I would still back us to win the title race. I think it's so, so important how we react to this because Man City had a damaging defeat against Chelsea in December and they crumbled afterwards. They started losing games. They looked a shadow of their former selves. And yes, some of that's due to injury injuries as well so we've got to be careful with our rotation we've got to be careful with how we choose the lineup against Wolves to make sure we don't overextend any players and cause injuries but if Liverpool can recover from this and I think it's handy that we have the Wolves game in between now and our next Premier League game just to gather our thoughts a little bit and compose ourselves before the game against Brighton in I think it's nine days time or something like that it's a Saturday kickoff on the 12th provided Liverpool can sort their heads out by then and get themselves back on track. If we can beat Brighton and then beat Palace the weekend after that, then I don't think this defeat is anything to worry about because at the end of the day, there is no shame in losing to that Manchester City team whatsoever. So yeah, a disappointing night, a frustrating night. Obviously, I'm as annoyed as all of you that Liverpool did not win that game or at least get a draw out of it. But if you are going to bed losing your mind about that result, please don't. Every little thing is going to be all right. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching it. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button down there. Hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back soon for the pre-match content for that FA Cup tie against Wolves on Monday. Until then, bye for now.